second story, and it's about the rabbit and the tiger. So another. Okay. The rabbit and the tiger. A long time ago, on a sunny spring day, a little rabbit was just waking up from a very pleasant, peaceful nap in the shade of a big rock. Mmm, he said as he stretched. What a good nap. Then suddenly he heard a strange noise. It was a huge tiger just a few feet away. The tiger had been watching him taking his nap. What a pleasure to meet you, rabbit, said the tiger. I'm very hungry. I think I will eat you at once. The tiger opened his mouth wide. Its shadow was bigger than the rabbit. The pleasure is all mine, tiger, said the rabbit, who was very worried and trying to think of a way to get out of the situation alive. I must ask that you don't eat me right away. Just a second. Why? growled the tiger. Wouldn't you like some rice cakes first? I know you're very hungry and I am too small to be a full meal for a tiger as big as you. The rabbit explained. Is this some kind of trick? asked the tiger. I'm offended that you would even think such a thing. All right then, purred the tiger. Give me some rice cakes to eat before I finish you off. And be quick about it. It will only take me a second to get the rice cakes. I have some, of, some on the other side of it. This rock. Quickly, the rabbit hopped to the other side of the rock and picked up eleven smooth white stones. Then hopped back to where the tiger was waiting. The tiger was very suspicious. These look like stones, rolled the tiger, showing his teeth. Don't be silly, said the rabbit. Rice cakes always look like stones until you cook them. Just wait, you'll see. Then the rabbit hopped around the around gathering sticks for a fire, never leaving sight of the tiger that was lazily waiting for his meal. When there was a nice blaze going, and this was a long time since the rabbit was trying to move as slow as he could. He put the rocks in it. As the stones sat warming in the fire, the rabbit chatted with the tiger about things like the weather as if they were close friends. Soon the tiger no longer doubted. Oh, oh, said the rabbit. I forgot to get some soy sauce. Soy sauce? What's that? Asked the tiger. You've never heard of soy sauce? The rabbit was now teasing the tiger. It makes cooked rice cakes taste much better. I will get some and be right back. You watch the rice cakes so they don't burn. All right, don't take all day, rolled the, the tiger. The rabbit hopped away as quickly as he could. As he made his escape, he looked back over his shoulder. I'll be right back, tiger, he called. But promise me you won't eat any of those ten rice cakes until I come back, okay? I know there are ten in all. Then he hopped along, laughing all the way. The tiger sat in front of the fire, getting hungrier, hungrier, and hungrier.
The stones were getting red with heat. As the tiger waited, he counted the rice cakes in the fire. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven? The tiger counted again. Eleven! That silly rabbit. Well, I'll eat just one rice cake while I wait for him to come back. He'll never know the difference. The tiger swallowed one of the red hot stones. He had never felt anything like the pain he would know with, would now experience. The tiger screamed and jumped and ran as the stone burned his mouth, his throat, and then his stomach. He could be heard screaming for what miles. Because of his burns, the tiger could not eat anything for many days. He just lay in bed and thought about what the rabbit had done to him. Then he was well enough to leave his cave. He was terribly hungry and terribly angry. While he was out looking for something to eat, he ran into the rabbit again. How nice to see you again, the tiger growled. Did you actually think you could get any away with the cruel trick you played on me? He said. Then he opened his mouth wide like the last time to eat the rabbit all in one gulp. The rabbit was confi confident of himself this time. So he smiled as he thought quickly. Why are you so mad at me? There must have been some sort of misunderstanding. The tiger did not know what to say. I have an idea, said Rabbit. No, oh no, not again, growled the tiger. I won't let you trick me again. Trick you? Me. Trick you? Never. In fact, I was just on my way to your cave. I wanted to tell you how to catch birds just by opening your mouth. The tiger was very hungry at this point. Just thinking about eating birds made him mouth water. Are you sure this isn't a trick? He asked. Of course not. The rabbit reassured him. Just trust me. The rabbit led the tiger into the middle of a field of wheat. He looked at the tiger and told him, Open your mouth and close your eyes for a big surprise while I chase birds in your direction. Then the rabbit hopped away. The tiger waited as patiently as he could, with his head held high and his mouth opened wide. To pass the time, he closed his eyes and thought about how good the birds would taste. In the distance, he could hear the rabbit making noises to scare the birds into his mouth. Shoo shoo, he heard him say. He also heard a sound that crackled and sizzled, but he did not pay much attention to it at first. Gradually, the cracking sound became louder and louder. He thought the crackling was the movement of the bird he was going to launch on. In anticipation, anticipation he opened his mouth even wider. Then he didn't taste any bird's meat. The tiger finally opened his eyes. That's when he saw a field full of weeds burning on around him. The clever rabbit had set it afire. The tiger ran from the field. But to get out of the field, he had to run thoughtfully. 
through the fire. Oh no, rabbit tricked me again, he shouted. This time I'm lucky to be alive. The hungry tiger was so badly burned that he had to spend many, very, many very painful weeks lying in his cave. The end. Oh, there's a tiger. Our poor tiger.